this movie, I want to look at blurring images using the new Blur Tools filters to be found in Photoshop CS6. And these uh, take advantage of what is known as Monaco Accelerated Processing, which makes use of OpenCL, providing that is that the uh, op uh, advanced graphics option is switched on in the performance preferences in Photoshop. And also if the graphics card in your computer is OpenCL enabled. So if all those criteria are met, then you can make really good use of the new Blur Tools filters. Although even if you haven't got the, uh, the, the enabling with the graphics card, you can still use them. They just won't run quite so fast. So um, you can look at the Blur Tools filters also as being uh, an alternative to working with the uh, Lens Blur filter because it allows you to do similar types of things in terms of blurring images. Anyway, let's have a look at the filters in action. If we go to the filter menu here, and come down to the blur menu, you can see there are three filters down here, field blur, iris blur, and tilt shift. And to start with, let's have a look at working with a field blur. So here you can see with the field blur selected that uh, the image is now in what can be regarded as a modal state where the panels that are in the background have now disappeared and been replaced by these two panels over here, the blur tools panel that allows you to select which effect you want to apply, the field blur in this case, but you can also choose to apply the iris blur or tilt shift. And then the blur effects, which allows you to control the, uh, the effects for the individual blurs. So to begin with, let's look at increasing the blur. If I just drag this slider to the right, you can see how quickly the screen preview updates as you do this. And also by moving the cursor over the blur ring here, it's possible just to click on the ring directly and adjust the amount of blur on the image using that method as well. And in the blur effects panel that I just mentioned, there is the light bokeh slider. And you can see that as you increase that, this starts to burn out the highlights in the image. And the bokeh color slider that's below it increases the amount of saturation in the, uh, in the highlights. And it's not just the highlights that you can burn out. You've also got a light range slider down here at the bottom, which normally is set with the two sliders towards the highlight end of the scale. But if I drag the shadow slider down and the highlight slider, it's possible to choose different areas of the image that you want to actually apply the uh, burnout to, so that rather than burning out the highlights, you can burn out the midtones, really to achieve a realistic type of photographic effect. You want to keep the sliders more towards the high end of the scale. And in the book, in chapter 10, I do go into more detail as to how um, Photoshop is creating the effect that you see here and how it actually is creating a pseudo high dynamic range image in the process to create a more realistic looking blur. If you want to find out more about that, then I suggest you read in detail the, uh, the information that's in that chapter. So there's the basic introduction to working with the field blur. Now, at the moment, it's applying a global blur to the whole image. And the way you want to work with the field blur is to actually click to add more pins where, for example, if I click up here and take the blur down to zero and then click on the blurry pin here and then move this out and then move this pin in, you can see how it's possible to create between the two pins a gradient blur effect. And you don't just have to work with two pins, you can add as many as you like. So if I was to add a, another pin up here and set the blur to zero and add say another pin down here and increase the amount of blur there, you can see how I can achieve a different type of gradient. And it's very easy just to keep on moving these around and achieve any sort of kind of blur effect that you're, that you're after. And when you're happy with that, then it's just simply a matter of clicking enter to apply the filter to the image. And the other thing you'll notice that in doing that, how quickly the processing takes. Now working with a lens blur filter, this isn't a particularly big image, but it would always usually take quite a little while for the uh, image to actually process. So that was a, 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 a demonstration of how to work with a field blur. Now let's select another image in which we can show you how to work with the uh, iris blur. So here you can see there's a certain amount of out of focusness in the picture already, but I would just want to add to this now using the iris blur filter. So if I select the blur, iris blur, and then if I just make this picture a little bit bigger, you can see here that you've got the iris blur controls where if I 
drag on these uh, on the outer uh, radius handles I can control the size and also the shape of the RS blur effect and over here we've got the RS blur slider so you can see that by increasing the amount of blur there I can make the outer areas more blurred and as with a field blur filter by dragging on the blurring itself I can also control the blur that way. So everything outside of this outer radius is going out of focus, it's becoming more blurred and then between these four handles you see here and the outer radius is the transition zone and if I was to click on one of these and drag in, uh, inwards or drag outwards you can see how it's possible to uh, expand or narrow the um, the area of the transition zone between being in focus and being out of focus and also if I hold down the option key on a Mac or the alt key on the PC I can control these individually and then you can see also there's this square box on the um, on the blur <coughs> on the RS blur radius and by dragging that you can make the effect more square or more round and so by adjusting the shape there you can see how you can control the effect quite easily. And then similarly down in the blur effects panel there are the controls for the light bokeh effect and by raising that up I can increase the amount of uh, highlight burn that takes place in the highlights and then by adjusting these sliders here in the light range I can control the point at which that blur that uh, those highlight blurs start to take effect and then also with the blur color I can decide whether I want the highlights to become more colorful or not. So very similar to working with the uh, field blur control that I showed you to begin with um, but just with the added controls there for controlling the transition between the center and between the outer radius and also the shape of the radius effect as well itself. So let me just go and apply that to the uh, image. And so lastly, let's come over to this image. And here we want to have a look at working with the tilt shift blur. So if I come to the blur menu again and select tilt shift, here you can see here's the blur ring in the middle, which allows us to control the amount of blur by clicking and dragging there or adjusting the blur slider over in the blur tools panel. There is a solid line uh, between the solid line and between the blur ring and the other solid line this represents the area of no blur effect and then between the solid line and the dotted line this is the transition zone and then everything outside beyond the dotted line is the area of maximum blur effect. If I hover the cursor over this point here and click and drag you can see how it's possible to rotate the tilt shift effect and you'll also see in the blur tools panel that as well as having the blur slider control there's also a distortion slider as well and this might become more apparent if I drag the slider all the way up to the top and apply a maximum amount of distortion. It's not the same both sides of the uh, of the lines so at the top what we have happening here is an elliptical type of distortion and down the bottom more of a stretching elongated distortion and this might become more apparent if I start tilting this around you can see perhaps the effect taking place there. If I also drag the blur pin you'll notice how the elongated um, distortion at the bottom centers around wherever the position of the blur pin is in the image. So there's quite a bit you can do to control the image using the distortion slider there as well as the position of the blur uh, ring itself. And if I was to drag the slider the other way then it creates um, an inverted distortion effect where I've got the elliptical distortion at the bottom and now the stretching taking place at the top. So let me just drag that from left to right and um, also in the blur tools there is a symmetrical distortion option and when that's selected you'll notice now that um, it's actually applying a elliptical type of distortion both to the top of the image and to the bottom and then if I drag on the distortion slider over to the right you can see that it's then applying an elongated type of distortion effect both top and bottom. So with the options you have you have available here over in the blur tools
There's a lot you can do to create different types of distortion effects. And as before with the other blur tools filters, you've got the bokeh effects down here and the blur effects so that by dragging the light bokeh slider over here, I can then increase the amount of um, brightness in the highlights and then also using the light range control. Similarly, again, I can control the effects there. So lots and lots of different things that you can do using these controls. And I haven't really touched on what's happening at the top here in the uh, options bar that we have for all the blur tools. There is a high quality option to uh, check if you want to create a better quality uh, blur to the image. You've also got the preview box that allows you to see a before and after. And then there's also a save mask to channels option. And if you want to check out more about how this works, then I suggest you have a look at the uh, chapter 10 in the book and I'll explain in more detail how that works. So here you have a brief introduction into working with the new Blur Tools filters in Photoshop CS6. Um, I think you'll agree that it's a lot faster than working with the lens blur filter and also a lot of different types of creative things that you can do with this new set of filters. Thank you.